Hello everyone and welcome to today's lab video where we're going to be going over all the features of the spine and the different um, intricacies of each vertebrae and some of the important ones and the key features of each region. So we have the cervical region, the thoracic region, and the lumbar region. And then we also have the sacrum or the sacral region and the coccyx as well. So we have that model. And then here's the uh, sacrum right there. So we'll go over the different parts of that to flip it around. Um, then we also have these more individual vertebrae uh, showing the different parts here. So we'll go over the C1 and C2 are, are the atlas and the axis uh, and the different important features of each and some of the important features that distinguish one regional vertebrae from another. Uh, so that's what this video is going to go over. So all the anatomical features of the spine. Uh, so starting out here, let's just go over the major overview of the spine. Uh, so the first seven um, bones here, so remember the vertebrae are irregular bones. So one through seven here, these are the cervical vertebrae. These are the ones in your neck. Uh, so lots of movement here. And these ones, are, it's a concave shape, a concave curvature. Um, and then I'll go down here and do the last five. So one, two, three, four, five. These ones are then the lumbar. So lumbar vertebrae also have a concave curvature to them. And then the middle ones, there are 12 here. These are the thoracic. These ones then have a convex shape to them. So the way we speak vertebrae, how do we say which one's which? We do C1 through C7 for the cervical, uh, T1 through T12 for the thoracic, and L1 through L5 for the lumbar. Uh, so if I'm talking about T2, I'd be talking about this one right here. So you know, different ways to refer to them. Now C1 and C7 have different names as well. So C1 is called the atlas. C2 then is called the axis. So atlas and axis. Atlas is the you know the god holding up the world, and the atlas vertebrae is the bone holding up your skull. So kind of the world, I guess. Um, and then another important feature here on the cervical vertebrae is this one. You can actually feel that bump right there, um, and that's called the cervical uh, prominence. Um, you can feel that back there, and that's how uh, you know where your C7 is. So you can touch that right now. Um, and also back here would be the sacrum which is you know five fused vertebrae together. Then after the sacrum, we have the coccyx, which is the rudimentary tailbone. And that's like uh, three or four fused vertebrae can vary. Um, so those aren't on this little you know string model here, but they are, I show them uh, later. Typically the coccyx is just fused to the sacrum right there. But I just wanted to go over first the general features of the spine. Uh, so we have these different curvatures and so forth. And you look at it on a skeleton, uh, you can see that. And a few other things here, we have these, since this is together, you kind of see it. We have all these little, you know, gaps right here. And these gaps are important. These holes are important. These are the intervertebral foramen. You know, I'll write those in here. Intervertebral foramen. And that's where your spinal nerves come in and out. So your spinal cord is running right through here through the foramen that goes to down through the middle of the spinal cord, which is the vertebral uh, foramen. So the intervertebral foramen is the one between the vertebrae. And when we look at the, you know, the foramen in the actual vertebrae, which we can't see at this angle here, that is then the vertebral foramen, which is where the spinal cord runs. Uh, and then there are also a few different processes here, but I'll, I'll go over those when we go over uh, other parts of the models. So now, one important thing is you want to be able to look at a vertebrae and figure out, okay, is this cervical, is this thoracic, or is this lumbar? They have different features to them and being able to distinguish each other. So this right here, we can see one of the differences right away. Look how large. So this part of the vertebrae here, I guess we should go over uh, the different parts of the vertebrae, general features of a vertebrae. Um, so we'll do that first before talking about the differences in each one. So if I were to, you know, draw, not draw, actually, let's just go to advance here and go to this. So just look at this 
one right there before my hand gets in the picture. So this is a lumbar vertebrae. Let's just label the major parts to it. So the first part right here, this is called the body. So it's the main weight bearing part. Uh, in the middle here, this is the vertebral foramen, what I mentioned earlier. Now there are seven processes that come off of, so the vertebrae is in a regular shaped bone. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then on the underside or the inferior side, six and seven. Uh, so seven processes, the ones that go off the sides, these are called the transverse process. The transverse. Uh, the one that comes off the back is just the spinous process. Spinous process. And then um, we have the two processes, uh, two that go up, two that go down. So they articulate with the vertebrae above and below it. So those are the superior and inferior articular processes. I'm not going to write those out, but superior and inferior. So it depends on which side. Articular processes. And then they also have a faucet on them. So usually we just combine those together and call them superior and inferior articular processes and faucets. And then we have the uh, vertebral foramen here. And there are a couple parts right here. There's this, you know, kind of like this bridge bone that comes out on each side here. This is called the uh, pedicle. And then we also have this part right here that connects this region to the spinous process. That's called the lamina. And then we have this arch in here, and that's called the vertebral arch. So these, these are important to know because when we compare ver one vertebrae to another, we will compare what this vertebral arch looks like, the shape of it, and so forth. So forth. Uh, but so these are the important parts here, and I needed to go over this before discussing the differences between each type of vertebrae. Uh, so then, uh, going back here, we can start going over that now. Uh, so here, think about the movements. So here I'm showing the first two, which are the atlas and the axis, which I'll get to those in a second. And then this is just showing other random ones. But I want to go back and show this one right here. Um, because it kind of gives a good angle. Let's zoom out just a tad. Go to the beginning of this. Oops, right there. All right, so first look at the body size. Look at the body size of the lumbar vertebrae. Large, uh, large, very large body. And look at this spinous process. This is more like a hatchet shape as well. So it's another way to re remember if you're looking at a vertebrae, if it has like a flat, blunt hatchet shape. And look at these thoracic ones. The thoracic ones are a little, are longer and a little pointed downwards as well. The body is also slightly smaller, but not the smallest. Whereas up here in the cervical vertebrae, the body is very, very small. There's a lot of movement. You don't need heavy vertebrae. You're only holding up your skull here. Um, another unique thing about the cervical vertebrae is that the sp spinous processes have this little indent on it. So if I were to draw out the back of the spinous process, it has this little bump in it. Now C7 doesn't have this, uh, but this is called a bifid. So if you zoom in down here, you can actually see this little indent in these vertebrae, and those are called the bifid. C7 does not have that though, and that's another way to distinguish C7, and then you start looking at the thoracic. Um, so the main differences are the body. The cervical vertebrae, most of them also have a hole or a foramen that travels down the transverse process. It's called the transverse foramen. So the transverse foramen or foramen doesn't exist over here because in your neck, you have some important arteries, uh, nerves, and veins that run through that foramen for protection. Um, but you don't find those foramen in the transverse processes moving down the rest of the system. Here, I, I can uh, show them when we look over here um, at the more separated ones. Uh, but those are uh, some of the first unique ones. And then I want to talk about uh, C1 versus C2. Uh, so when you look at a bone, you want to be able to figure out where it's from. And you want to look at the body size. Um, now, C1 has no body on it. Um, and we'll explain why because that's where rotation happens. But these ones, the body size increases as we get down to the large body down here. Now, I wouldn't pick like the difference between T12 and L1 and try to trick you up like that. It'd, it'd be obvious differences between the two if I were to ask the difference. Okay, so here, 
is showing the atlas and the axis. So here you can also see that transverse process right there on the atlas. So just to label these again, uh, first one here is the atlas. So that's C1 and then C2 is the, oh, I wrote this backwards. So this one is the axis or C2, cervical two. So there's this little knob that comes up here. And this is kind of what the body then becomes for the rest of the vertebrae. Think about this knob. So this is a pivot joint. Um, what happens when you go like this? C1 and C2 are rotating over each other like that when you say no. So that pivot joint right there allows you to say no. And then right here, there's a faucet that articulates with the occipital condyles on the base of the skull. Look at the angle of this faucet. So it's moving like that. Think about that movement. So that is allowing your head to go yes. Oops. Yes. So atlas, yes, axis, no. Those are the two main movements right there in your neck. Now there is no disc. So every vertebrae has a disc between it, except for C1 and C2. So uh, all right, no disc right here too, as a reminder. So now if we go uh, over here, now I'm not gonna go over all the major, all the other little differences between all the vertebrae. There are some other ones, but um, mainly it's this dense, this knob-like structure is unique on the axis. And also um, there's no body on the atlas. And then we can see that when we go over here and look at these ones. So there I'm holding up the ax atlas right now. You can see that rounded articulation for the occipital condyles and you don't see a body there. And then I grab the axis and there you can see that dens, which is that knob that sticks up. And you can see this articulation here where you can see that movement can go like this. Uh, so kind of neat how that works. Uh, and then as we move through here, there you can see the large body. Also the uh, foramens, the vertebral foramens have different shapes to them as well. So the cervical foramen are more diamond like this. The thoracic foramen are more round like, and then the lumbar ones are a little bit more pinched diamond or oval like. Um, so there's other differences you can see within the vertebrae as well. Uh, just it, you can see how that's more oval like, and then the uh, cervical vertebrae are a larger triangle. I think there's a lot more movement here. So it needs more space for your spinal cord to move around your cervical vertebrae. Whereas the lumbar, not uh, the thoracic, are a bit more round right there. And you can see that right there. And the lumbar also lock. Think about the movement. You know, I can move my thoracic, my cervical a little bit, but your lumbar, they're, they're locked in place. And there's not very little movement that happens with your lumbar vertebrae. So then uh, going through here, let's see. We haven't talked about the sacrum yet. So we can do that just a little bit. I think my video froze a little bit. Um, so. Going to the sacrum, hold on, I need to, I think I need to restart my video. Oh, there we go. Um, here, let's start on this side, is, which is the posterior view of the sacrum. Uh, so here I know it's a little, um, white balance is a little off here, uh, but here are the two little faucets that would connect, so right there it's showing L5. So L5 actually locks into the, um, superior side of the sacrum. And there are these uh, foramens here. These are called the posterior sacral foraminas. Down here we have the coccyx, which is the fused tailbone. Here are the little um, articulating or auricle surfaces. This is where the hip articulates onto the sacrum. Um, and then there's this crest, a median sacral crest that goes down the middle here. And then if we flip it over, which I do first, so here, this part, you can kind of see right there before I grab it, let's get my hand out of the picture, right there. Uh, you see these fused lines right here. Those are where the, the fused bones have fused together. So one, two, three, four, four around four uh, fused bones. Um, so here we also see the these are then, even though they come through on this side, these are now called the anterior. Uh, so this is the anterior side. This is the one facing forward. So it kind of curves in. So it has that uh, convex shape to it as well. Um, so here, uh, showing those uh, foraminas down here, and then also these are the alas. So here, I'll label these uh, the ala, which ala means wing-like structure. <laughs> and then up here, there's a ridge. This is called the sacral promontory. 
So the sacral promontory, the ala, uh, and then over here, these little fusion points, these are called the transverse ridge or ridges as well. And that's just the fusions where these bones have fused together. Then down here, of course, we have the coccyx. So those are the main parts here. Um, there are some other, oh, there's another kind of slightly important one that we can't really see on this side that I forgot to say on the previous one. Uh, so when we flip it back over, we can see that there's this little canal that moves down through it. You kind of see it right there. So that is called the sacral canal. And the sp spinal cord uh, terminates before this, but then it becomes the cauda equina, which separates out into a bunch of spinal nerves. And they those nerves run down through here then, uh, through the sacrum. And then they exit the bottom of the sacrum at the sacral hiatus. So if we can move this video back just a tiny bit, we might be able to see it. So this uh, bone isn't great because it actually doesn't show this channel going through there. Then down here would be the sacral hiatus. So it's not a perfect model representation to show that. Um, so, but those are the major parts. Uh, here, I'll play this video again, just so you could see it through without me interrupting. So the major regions of the vertebrae, the different curvatures of the vertebrae. So just imagine the sacrum and the coccyx attached down here as well. Um, and knowing the key differences between the atlas, the axis, cervical, thoracic, see the, what the spinous processes look like, and then the lumbar, the big, the big old bones. And then over here, we can then show the remaining ones like this. So that's all I have for today. Uh, just a little video going over the major features of a vertebrae. They're very irregularly shaped the bones, a bunch of processes, um, but they are very important for protecting our spine and allowing movement of our body and giving us our midline. But okay, that's all I have for today. Hope you all have a great day. Please let me know if you have any questions and bye-bye.